Hi, okay, so here we're going to do a whole bunch of short division examples. You can see how it works. We'll start off with some really easy problems that anyone can do. Um, we'll do with 2 into 48, 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 goes into 8 4 times. Now, you can check your answer. 24 times 2, I get 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, 48 is the number I started with, so I know it's right. 3 goes into, let's see, 69. 3 will go into 6 2 times. 3 goes into 9 3 times. Let's check our answer. 23 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2 is 6. So again, our answer matches the number we started with, and we know it's correct. So these problems were really easy, one because the divisors were really small, and also because there weren't any remainders within the problem. Now let's take a look at some slightly harder cases where there are some remainders within the problem. Okay, we'll do 2 into 72, and I've got 2 goes into 7 three times, that makes 6, and there's one left over. Now I'm just going to box in my next number, and I see here that it's 12. 2 goes into 12 six times. Well, 36 times 2, I'm going to check my answer here, 2 times 6 is 12. And notice that that 1 that we carry is the same 1 that was left over when we divided. So I'll continue, 3 times 2 plus 1 is 7. My answer is 72, matches the number I started with. Wow, that was pretty easy. Let's do another one. Okay, so 3 goes into 87, 3 goes into 8 two times, and there's a 2 left over. That makes the next number I have to divide 27. 3 goes into 27 nine times. So let's check 29 times 3. 3 goes into 9, or 3 times 9 is 27. There's that 2, the same 2 that was left over. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2 is 8. All right. I think we might be getting the hang of this. Okay, so let's erase these problems and look at a slightly larger divisor. This time we'll try dividing by 4, and we'll do 4 into 60. So 4 goes into 6 one time with 2 left over. 4 goes into 20 five times. Okay, my answer is 15. I'll take 15 and multiply it by 4. 4 times 5 is 20, and there's that 2, the same 2 that was left over from before. And then 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. There's my 60. It's the same number I started with, so I know it's correct. Okay, let's try 5. This time let's do 5 into 65. 5 goes into 6 one time, and there's going to be 1 left over. 5 goes into 15. I'm drawing a box around my number here. 5 goes into 15 three times. And I'll take my answer, 13. I'm just going to multiply it by 5. 3 times 5 is 15. There's that 1 that I carried, the same 1 that was left over. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Hey, I get 65, the number I started with. Okay, so let's look at what made these problems easy. First of all, there were small dividends, and it's always easy to divide small numbers. But more importantly, there were small divisors. Dividing by 2, 3, 4, and 5 is easy because we know the times tables pretty well. And also, since the numbers are small, it's easier to find the leftovers. Now, let's look at some interesting cases, something that we haven't seen before. Let's take 2 into 112. 2 doesn't go into the first number. I'm going to put an x on top. Okay, if you're used to long division, you might say 2 goes into 11. But if you're, also, if you're used to short division, you might say, I didn't use that one. It's left over. So my next number is 11, because I'm going to take my leftover number and put it in front of the next one. Well, 2 goes into 11 five times with one left over, making the new number 12. 2 goes into 12 six times. Let's check. 56 times 2. 2 times 6 is 12, carry the 1, 
2 times 5 plus 1 is 11. Now the first one that we carried is this one, and the second one is that initial one that was uh, left over. Okay, let's try that again. This time we'll divide by 4. We'll say 4 goes into 272. 4 doesn't go into 2, so I'm going to put an x on top. Now if you're used to long division, you'd just say 4 goes into 27, but I'll say those two we didn't use, that's left over. My new number is 27. 4 goes into 27 6 times with 3 left over. Now 4 goes into 32 8 times. If I check my answer, 68 times 4 gives me 4 times 8, is 32, carry the 3. 6 times 4 plus 3 is 27. Now that 3 matches this leftover 3, and this 2 matches the 2 that we didn't, we weren't able to divide at the beginning. Okay, let's go ahead and erase that, and we'll see another interesting case. Now this time we're going to divide by 3. Let's do 3 into 306. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 doesn't go into 0, it goes in 0 times. 3 goes into 6 two times. Okay, so 102 times 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 1 is 3. 306 matches the number we started with. Maybe that actually didn't seem too hard, so let's try a slightly different example. 200 into 816. 2 goes into 8 four times. 2 doesn't go into 1. It actually goes in 0 times. I have to put that 0 there. And we didn't use the 1. It's left over. So my next number is 16. 2 goes into 16 eight times. Let's double check. 408 times 2, and when I multiply I get 8 times 2 is 16, carry the 1, that's that same 1 that was left over. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, 2 times 4 is 8. So I get 816, the number that I started with. These numbers had zeros in the answer, and that was what made them a little tricky. Okay, so we're going to do one more example that has a zero in the answer, and I think that after we do the problem, by drawing it out, I'll be able to show you um, why the number that we didn't use is actually left over. So 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 2 zero times. We can't make any groups of 3. That 2 is left over, which we'll see why later. 3 goes into 27 nine times. When we check the answer, we see 3 times 9 is 27, carry the 2, 3 times 0 plus 2 is 2, and 3 times 1 is 3. Now I'm going to draw this out with uh, base 10 blocks. So that's 327. I'm going to first group my hundreds, and you see here I can make one group of 3 with my hundreds. But I can't make any groups of 10s because I don't have enough. And that means those two 10s are left over and so I have to break them up. I'm going to redraw the problem and break those two tens up into ten ones each. That gives me twenty. And I also have to bring down those leftover seven. So there's ten, twenty, twenty-seven. And now when I group, I'm going to make groups of three. And here you can see I've already got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine groups because 27 divided by 3 is 9. And there I get the answer, 109. I've grouped everything. Okay, so we're going to try some more difficult problems. These problems are harder because we're dividing by larger numbers. Let's do 6 into 516. Okay, 6 doesn't go into 5. That 5's left over. 6 goes into 51. Hmm, it goes in 8 times. That's 48 with 3 left over. And the last number we have to divide is 36. 6 goes into 36 6 times. I'm just going to check my answer. And when I multiply 86 times 6, 
I see that um, I get the number that I started with, 516. You can see that was definitely some more mental math, right? Now let's try the 7 times table. 7 goes into 100, or 1,736. Well, it goes into 17 two times with 3 left over. 7 goes into 33 only 4 times, that was 28. So there's 5 left over. And 7 will go into 56 8 times, making the answer 248. And if I multiply that times 7, I'm going to get the answer that I started with. 7 times 8 is 56, 7 times 4 plus 5 is uh, 28 plus 5 is 33, 2 times 7 plus 3 is 17, and again I get the answer that I began with, so I know that this, this solution was correct. And now we'll just quickly review the short division steps. When you divide, um, you always begin from the left, you start with the first number and see how many groups you can make, and you're going to write the number of groups on top. Now, if there's any leftovers, you need to write those leftovers in front of the next number. And because short division is a repetitive process, you just keep on doing this again and again until you've reached the end of the number inside the house. And that's how you do short division. It works really well when you have small divisors like 2, 3, 4, and 5. But you can also do it with divisors of 6, 7, 8, and 9, even larger ones, if you're good at your mental math or you're willing to do a little bit of scratch work on the side.